the importance of having horses and riding the horses against the flow of the pipeline, I believe, is to show people that you don't need a car to get somewhere. You can rely on your old trusty friend, the horse. So um, with that being said, I'd like to introduce Annie. Um, she's gonna play some music and talk a little bit more about the ride. Bonjour. Um, so everything that's been said here tonight, I would probably say in, in a different form, but ultimately, you know, we are all trying to protect the earth and its resources for future generations. This is my grandson. And um, his father rode on the ride with us. So we start in the morning, we ride against the tide of the pipeline proposed routes. And I, I think I did do it for myself. You know, a lot of people say I didn't do it for myself. I, I, I think I did do it for myself because it was a time to um, take time out of my life, to sit on the horse and uh, concentrate and think about what I was doing. Because usually, you know, you're doing dishes or you're going to town to get, you know, you're just running around in your life and you don't think. So it was a time for me to think for hours and hours. It was time for me to get to know my horse. And, you know, my mom always says that, that the plant nations will be the last, the last ones to give up on human beings. And those plants can't live without water. We can't live without water. And um, I think we take it for granted a lot, right? We turn on the faucet, we get water, we slam it, we pour some down the drain, and you know, we just on our way. But water is really in danger. And um, I, I was able to see a viewing of a documentary being made about Winona Leduc and her um, stand against this, along with other folks. And they had a hearing with Enbridge, and there were three, of, three officials from Enbridge at, the, at this hearing. Two of them, you could look on their faces, were just irritated to be there, to have to sit there and listen to what these people had to say. There was a young guy in the middle with his little shirt and tie, and he was staring at the floor because he was, he was hearing. So I think if one of those guys can, you know, get through to one of those guys, why not get through to all of them? Maybe. So. I woke up yesterday and got a text from Thane and Monona, and they, they are out in um, Standing Rock. And I felt really urgent. I thought, I should do something. What can I do? Should I drive out there? But the spirits, if, if you listen, they'll tell you things, right? And I was told we should go into the sweat lodge and pray really hard. Because that's really powerful. Some people think that's a passive thing. Praying is kind of passive, but prayer can change the rotation of the earth if enough of us are praying. So I didn't get a big profound answer from Creator. Annie, this is what you should do to help the earth. My answer was go into that lodge and pray and you get answers there. You know, you get a few little answers at a time. You take a couple steps and you get some answers and you take a few more steps. You don't get answers to the whole thing. And my good friend John Trudell, he said, man, question, I mean, the answers to these, these um, solutions to a lot of our problems don't exist yet. And I'm, I'm like, oh my God. If John didn't know, what are we gonna do? But, you know, they're gonna come to life sometime, maybe maybe they'll come to life through him or come to life to someone in this room. And so I'm, I'm really honored to be here. Oh, put your shirt on. And um, to be here tonight because I think that it's not <clears throat> the numbers that matter because I played little community halls with five little girls and it's the most ama amazing energy exchange, you know, and that's what we're doing now. And those songs on that hand drum, that those hand drum songs are powerful. You can feel them. That that's power. Okay, don't don't get electricity and 
people in uniforms mixed up for power, because power is more real. And I didn't mean to give you a big philosophy speech. I was supposed to talk about the ride, wasn't I? But it was a good ride. It was good. And um, I'm from the Leech Lake Reservation, and there is a, a pipeline being, uh, they're going to abandon it. They're going to just, just pretend it's not there anymore. They're going to drop a new line right next to it without unearthing and looking at all the damage and the leaks that are already existing in this Line 3 pipeline. Right through my reservation, that's 50% water under rivers, you know, through the Mississippi, you know, through, through Leech Lake. So before the weather turns, I hope to go ride that along Highway 2 from Bull Club to Cass Lake and see if our tribal leaders will also stand with what's happening because it's going to take that, you know, uniting people and uniting, um, you know, the elected officials. They seem to have more um, authority. <clears throat> but I want to sing a healing song first, and my grandson will get his drum. He'll get his drum. I want to just sing a, a, a song. I don't know. I don't know if he'll stay here and really. We'll see what he does. This is um, Adzukan. Adzukan means a story or a teaching, the legend, the, the teacher in the story, the person telling the story, all of it, and that's his Indian name. So I'm going to do a few songs, and I want to invite a young man up. His name is T. Chill. I heard him perform at a pipeline event. Last year's, we had the big show in Bemidji and he was there. And he got up and did his thing and I was really impressed. Can you control volume on this mic? Okay, so. Do you want to just warm up? Uh, yeah, sure. About a minute. So we'll let him, we'll let him warm up. <laughs> Sherman Alexa. 
Lexi and Jim Boyd, who is not with us physically on this earth anymore, but it's a really good woman's song. Chill and I have practiced. This is our second practice if this counts for a practice. So on, on the, the ride a couple years ago, I, I knew that, you know, within the rides we stop and we do press conferences and we sing songs. So I wanted to do something um, new, so I wrote a song. Because I have questions too, because people, I, I um, was reading online, people saying, if all you people are against oil and pipelines, why don't you quit riding cars and that stuff, you know, I'm like, um, that's not realistic, and, and we're not about none of it, because we're all dependent on oil right now. But I hope, you know, I hope to change that, because we actually do create the demand, don't we? So,
So I wrote a song because I, I kind of, I struggle with this within myself. My friend John Trudell and um, in times like this I ask myself and I say what would John do and, um, this is kind of an old song I just kind of started singing it again in fact I had to write the lyrics on really quick I can't really see that far but
Johnny's future? Who carved up Johnny's wage? Who thought they'd carve up history page by bloody page? Who forgot? The song I wrote about a friend of mine named Will Copeland, and Will is fighting the water battle in uh, Michigan, in Flint. Change the world I 
I'm, I'm done. But what I wanted to do to my, so I, I went on this ride and I have this really, really awesome husband. And um, he, he came on the ride too. And he, he's actually the horseman of the family, I just pretend. And um, I know that he had a really, um, I don't know, I, I thought maybe Todd could come and talk about his own experience a little bit about the ride, because I don't think I covered the ride, ride, and Todd helped coordinate the horses and, you know, that logistic with the horses every day. Thank you, Teachell. Uh, yeah, so I'm Todd, and, uh, you know, I've never been uh, a, an activist, and uh, when Winona came to my wife, and talked to her about doing this ride. She, my wife came to me and she said, Todd, man, we, we should do this. And I was like, yeah, but I use oil every day. I use gas, you know, uh, pretty much everything I do is involved with it, you know, other than when I ride my horse. <clears throat> and uh, I thought, well, you know, I'll, okay, I'll just go, I'll just go. And. Uh, so the first year we went on a ride, and uh, Mike Dahl was was with us riding, and uh, as we're riding, we're we're riding the Soul Line, and as we're riding, you know, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out why I'm there, and you know, what what part do I have in this? But Mike is talk pointing out all these plants. You know, he's pointing all the plants out as we ride along and he's saying that you can use that to fix this or that will help you with this. So he's telling us what, what all these plants can do for our bodies, you know, to help us, to heal us. Uh, you know, so they're medicines, man. I mean, you look at them and you think, that's a weed, man. I don't want that in my yard. But then I find out, <clears throat> you know, the, <laughs> there's use for that thing, you know. And I get to thinking about this oil line coming through. And, and I thought, man, no, this can't happen. You know, we, now I know why I'm here, because I don't want that to ruin this, you know. I don't want that oil to take away all, all the other nations that are out there that help, help us, you know. The, the plant nations, the four-legged, the winged, all those are here for a purpose. And another thing that came to me is that all those things, if, if you took human out of the picture, all those other things would continue to live. They wouldn't have a problem with us being gone, you know? But if we're here ruining things for them, it affects many other things when one of those things disappears. It affects many other things. You know, it's not just them gone, it's a lot of things become gone. And uh, so it was a really moving, moving experience for me to, you know, to, to start feeling all that. <clears throat> and, uh, and it was pretty awesome. So I knew from that point <clears throat> that I wanted to be involved in this ride. You know, as long as Winona wants to do it, I'll do it. And uh, I can tell you, man, I, you know, I got a little frustrated at times because, you know, schedules get bounced around and all that. But, <clears throat> you know, that's stuff we just got to deal with, you know. And, uh, and uh, I, I think those things brought the people that were on the ride together a little more. I met this year, uh, we were very honored to have some uh, Dakota people come over and ride with us. Very honored, man. They were really, really, uh, really cool. And Seth, Seth Easton was uh, the elder of the bunch and he, he brought some nephews of his and some friends. And uh, he talked to us about how they do the 38 ride, which kind of helped us or helped me decide, you know, maybe we should incorporate that into our ride. You know, they relay. You know, we were talking about riding. We've been riding uh, 10, 15 miles a day. And sometimes what they do, because they do it in the dead of winter, you know, 40 below <laughs> inch, you know, <laughs> and everything. So what they do is they relay. They'll have some guys ride five miles. They'll, you know, jump in the trucks to warm up and another five guys will take off and ride, you know. So we kind of incorporated that a little bit into our ride this year and, and it kind of it worked out pretty good. 
uh, because we also had some people that, you know, aren't experienced horse people that wanted to ride, you know, so we kind of tried to help them get in on it. And, and uh, you know, that went really well. We, we did have uh, a, one, one injury, but uh, Tara, she, she took it pretty well. Um, it was awesome to see her, man. I, I, I hadn't seen her for probably four or five years. I, I actually went to Canada with her and uh, the same person put us out to fast up there. And I hadn't seen her since then. And here she come walking into camp. And man, it was just cool because she's doing all the things she was talking about when we were in Canada, <laughs> you know. So that was really cool. And, uh, and then we had uh, some Diné people come also that rode with us. And that, that was pretty cool, man, too. I thought, you know, they come all the way from down there up here just to spend a day on, a, you know, riding horse with us. And uh, a couple of those people were, were at, you know, they ride, and, and they were good riders, but they had one who uh, kind of gave us some, some good laughter. He got on Winona's horse. Winona didn't ride that day, so Winona's horse is really calm and easy going, so she gave him his horse, you know, her horse, and, uh, <laughs> and he got on, and they had one of them synthetic saddles on him, on the horse. And so when he got on, <clears throat> we all start riding off, and all of a sudden we hear this, ah, thump. And uh, <laughs> what happened is the saddle slid sideways. <clears throat> and of course he fell off and hit the ground. <clears throat> and of course I'm thinking, oh no, man, I hope he ain't. But he bounced right up laughing, just laughing, you know, belly laughing. And I thought, Whoosh, you know, <laughs> but, so that was kind of cool. But uh, I did end up getting a tattoo. Uh, after the first year we rode, uh, another thing that Mike Dahl kind of inspired with his talk, and uh, but he but he also talked a little bit about why why it's a good good thing to ride them horses, and uh, I I can't remember the whole story that was given to him, but it has to do with uh, when we're riding them horses, the sound of the hoofbeats hitting the ground and touching the ground, they're they're like the thunder beams. They awaken everything around us, and they get everything's attention. So one of the reasons we ride them horses is to get everything's attention and bring it, you know, so they, everything wakes up to what we're doing, so they come in here and find out what we're doing. So uh, that, that, that was a pretty, pretty moving thing for me, too. Uh, horses saved my life. I, you know, if it weren't for the horse that I ride, I'd probably still be sitting in some bar drunk or be dead or in prison one of the two <laughs> one of those things but uh i was fortunate enough that uh creator didn't didn't uh, want that for me in my life and he and and he gave me this horse to help me get through you know to to get out of that so but anyway